Functions produce graphs in many different forms. For example, these two are missing certain segments. This is because their rules are restricted by certain mathematical limitations. In the case of 1 on x, if you let x equal to 0, 1 divided by 0 does not yield anything. There is no answer, so we would say it's undefined. As for square root x, we can use 0 or positive numbers, but we cannot put negative numbers in there. Technically, that would be undefined, unless you're looking at complex numbers. So today we will make use of these limitations to determine the restrictions around three questions. First up, we have f of x equals square root 4 minus x. Question, what is the restriction on this domain? The major rule is a square root. So as long as the inside of that is zero or positive, we'll be fine. It cannot be a negative. So to find our restriction, all we need to do is set up 4 minus x to equate to zero or something positive. We do this by writing 4 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. Rearrange the inequality and we will find that x is less than or equal to 4. Let's test out a few values to see why this is true. Say x is equal to 2, so f of 2 equals square root 4 minus 2, and that equals to square root 2, which is a valid answer. If x equals to 5, however, f of 5 equals to 4 minus 5, and that is a square root of negative 1, which doesn't work. But if we tried something much smaller and even negative, like x equals negative 5, f of negative 5 equals to square root 4 plus 5, which equals to square root 9, which equals to 3. So those two answers are valid, while the middle one is not, because that's greater than 4. So we've confirmed that our restriction is correct. Okay, let's check out this next question, which may or may not have a restriction. So in the case of this square root function, we need the inside to be 0 or positive. So we set x squared plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. Rearranging this gives us x squared greater than or equal to negative 3. And this statement will always be true no matter what value you put into x because it's being squared, turning it into a positive number. And when you take x squared and plus 3, you'll always get a positive number anyway. So the inside of the square root will always be positive no matter what you do. So this will always be true for any x value, in other words, x can be any real number because there is no restriction. Now for the third and final question. When given something like this, many students will try to simplify it as 1 on x plus 2, but that would be wrong because x minus 1 in the denominator is creating some sort of restriction and we're not allowed to remove that. So to find the restriction in this question, we must take note that x minus 1 cannot equal to 0 and x plus 2 also cannot equal to 0 because you cannot divide by 0. So set up two equations for these relationships and rearrange them to find our two exceptions. x cannot equal to 1 and x cannot equal to negative 2. You can leave this as the final answer or you can go further by showing what's included and saying x is an element of all real numbers except these two numbers negative 2 and 1 and that is your complete restriction. And check out the graph of this function, it's actually pretty cool. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 and a hole at x equals to 1. The reason it's a hole and not a vertical asymptote is simply because you have x minus 1 as your numerator and that is trying to divide itself in the denominator. So you would end up with this very unique graph. And something important to keep in mind is the hole won't reveal itself on a calculator unless you do a graph trace onto that specific coordinate. So that's it for me. I hope this made sense. You can let me know what you think down in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to join the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one and I'll see you next time. Bye.